Teacher as facilitator. Hello Emma and Thomas. In this module we will talk about teachers as facilitators. You are our teacher experts at Sustain All. What does teacher as facilitator mean? Can you explain it in more detail? Um, we think the main aspect is how you define learning. This influences the role you take on as a teacher, how you plan lessons, what you expect from your students and how you communicate with them. But also important is, what the learning scenarios look like and how performance is assessed. Right. This module is therefore closely linked to modules 7, 8 and 10, which deal with sustainability competence, active and collaborative learning and transformative learning. Okay. Then let's dive deeper into the question of what factors are central to modern ESD and how teachers can orientate their actions to be successful as facilitators and enablers. First of all, we need to ask ourselves the question, what should be facilitated? Stephen Sterling from the University of Plymouth introduces the idea of three levels of knowing and learning. Learning can involve and affect different levels of consciousness. First order of change addresses cognition. It might be an effective way of doing things better, without examining or changing the assumptions or values behind it. While second order change wants the students doing better things. It refers to a significant change in thinking or in what you are doing, as a result of examining assumptions and values. This requires metacognition. Third order change is about seeing things differently. It means the experience of seeing our worldview rather than seeing without our worldview. Here epistemic learning is addressed. Module 10 takes a closer look at transformative learning. But important prerequisites include critical thinking and reflection. When you question your view of things, it sometimes becomes complicated and uncomfortable. Transformative learning in the epistemic sense is difficult. It might cause confusion and being overwhelmed by complexity. The role of the teacher is then to initially endure this confusion together, to accompany and support them in finding solutions and new ways of thinking and to facilitate experiences. The focus shifts from teaching content and information to creating a learning environment in which students can explore and discover knowledge. The role of the teacher is changing from being an expert in the respective subject area, to advising and mentoring the students. The approach is changing, from guiding and instructing students to encouraging students to actively learn and take control of their own learning. This means a shift in teaching methods, for example from lectures and demonstrations to collaboration and group work, assessed not with tests, quizzes and essays, but with portfolios, projects and observations. From a meta perspective, this includes awareness for and dealing with ecocentrism, collaboration with extracurricular partners, dealing with uncertainties, give students freedom to creatively develop solutions to sustainability problems, practice democracy in the choice of topic and teaching impact. Students and teachers communicate at eye level. Teacher must be able to relate topics from the children's world with regard to ESD. Of course we cannot explain every aspect in depth. But dealing with uncertainty seems to be an important aspect of education for sustainable development. Teachers must be facilitators for a world we do not yet know. For dealing with uncertainties we found an expert. In an additional video Professor Benedict Huitman explains us why we should embrace uncertainties. For now, we will have a look at how to implement this in school. Thomas and Emma, do you have any concrete examples of this? Oh yes. One of our Sustain All Schools has a system in which, from grade 5 onwards, students are supported in discovering their own abilities, pursuing their own interests and increasingly working independently on really big projects, called Future Skills. They work according to Professor Dr. Ann Schliefka's Deeper Learning Teaching Model. The teacher takes on different roles in different phases of learning. Teachers need adaptive expertise. In the first phase of the deeper learning process, there is still more instruction from the teacher. Here, cognitive structures are built up that serve as a basis for the learners to acquire expertise. 
In the second phase, the focus is on co-construction and co-creation. The teacher increasingly becomes a coach. The learners receive targeted and individual support, depending on their needs. The third phase is about the learner's authentic performance. They take responsibility for their learning process. The teacher does not test at the end, but gives formative and summative feedback. From out interviews I can share some quotes with you from the school leader Mrs. Kranich and from teachers and students from the Stromberg Gymnasium in Germany. Beginning with very tiny little projects in class 5, the Future Skills Project expands to a cross-curricular project of three colleagues in grade 9 to a large project of the student's choice in grade 10. Learning not this hierarchical, but more that almost everyone is networked with each other and everyone can contribute something to school life. Students are also the main actors, because we have to learn something. Teachers need the appropriate mindset for such work, I don't know everything better. Teachers need to go meta and be able to take on different teaching roles. Not everyone is suited for this. Maybe some teachers support the other teachers who are less able to take on responsibility for such big projects. As a school leadership, you have to decide who can fill and take on this role, and you have to create the space for it. The Stromberg Gymnasium gradually introduces students to the complex requirements of ESD-based project work. Since this also includes self-reflection, personal responsibility, identity and character building as well as democracy education. It is logical that a spiral curricular approach is used here. These are not short-term goals. You can now stop the video for a moment and and consider how these quotes fit into our theoretical model. During our observations of different projects, the students repeatedly emphasize that the projects are not graded. This seems to be a key concept. There are no constraints, own interests can be pursued, motivation is much higher and there is no pressure from grades. With three class tests per week, I decide what I learn and what I don't learn. In the project I deal more intensively, I have better concentration. I am a procrastinator, but I have learned to motivate myself. Teachers obviously have to take on many variable roles. One main task remains, to facilitate learning, preferably deep and transformative learning. See you in the next modules. Mm -hmm.